Yeah, so my claim in this video is that doing a PhD is actually easy. And uh, I think this might be <laughs> quite a controversial topic. Um, personally, I didn't find my PhD that easy, uh, but I've seen some things through my time in academia during my PhD and after my PhD that leads me to make this claim. I've seen a number of uh, PhD defenses and PhD di dissertations, and in my opinion, the bar for passing just isn't very high. The most egregious example of this I've seen is someone who couldn't understand the questions being asked and couldn't formulate a legible answer to the questions being asked, and they still got their PhD. I've also seen dissertations that were less than 50 pages long and not particularly well written, and these people still get their PhDs. And in reality, I think the biggest challenge in getting a PhD is actually being accepted to the program, because it's in the university's interest, it's in the department's interest that you get through the program. And so they will do everything they can to get people through their pro their program and make sure that people don't fail. So in reality, if you just show up, do your job to some extent in any way, and just follow the requirements, you're going to get your PhD. So let's have a look at what are the actual requirements to doing a PhD. There are basically five requirements that you actually need to do in order to get a PhD. And uh, those are, you have to pass your coursework, which means getting a B or B minus at, at least. This is from uh, an American point of view, but I uh, a lot of other countries also have these great requirements. Um, but this video is mostly going to be from an American point of view because I did my PhD in the US. It's also going to be to some extent from a Danish point of view. I've seen this these things when I as a, when I've been working as a postdoc here in Denmark as well. So it's definitely not unique to the US. So you have to conduct research. You have to pass your candidacy exam, and then you have to write a dissertation and defend your dissertation. So those are really the five things you actually have to do in order to get your PhD. Let's start by talking about passing your coursework. So up until this point, you've been an undergrad and you have everything you have done is passing coursework. To become a PhD student, you have to at least be decent at getting decent grades, uh, and most people are going to be pretty good at getting good grades. And so passing the coursework is, a, from what I've seen, for many people it's going to be the easiest part. Getting a B or better is usually not that challenging for most PhD students, from what I've seen. For me personally, I think that was probably the hardest bit, was actually just <laughs> passing my coursework. I think for most, at least from my, what I've seen, passing the cor coursework is probably the easiest part. Because you've practiced it so much throughout your academic career, and you're probably here because you're good at it. Okay, so number two, doing research. This portion, I would say the main thing you have to do is just show up and do something every day. It's not that hard. It doesn't require an incredible cognitive ability to actually do this. You just you literally just show up and do something every day. And you would have to do that no matter what you do. You're gonna have to do something. How much you actually have to do is very dependent on yourself and your advisor. So if you put a lot of pressure on yourself and you really want to perform and get a lot of publications and all that, you probably you are probably going to work a lot. Also, your advisor, if he is determined to publish and progress their career, they're also go probably going to pressure you into working more. But there are advisors who are have tenure and they don't really have a strong desire to progress their career, they don't really care that much about publications or whatever. And uh, I've seen many cases where they just don't care that much how much you work. And uh, so if you choose an advisor and you don't see that much of a va much value in publishing a lot, you can you don't actually have to work that much or that hard. So that's doing the research, the do things you do on a daily basis. 
Now, passing your candidacy. So candidacy is the candidacy exam is basically a big exam at the middle of your PhD where you display that you have actually done something and that you are actually capable of finishing your project. Um, and for this, you generally need to write a document. It can be anywhere from 10 to 30 pages from my experience. And uh, you write this document and then you defend it. And the quality of this writing, it doesn't have to be amazing. It doesn't have to be incredible. You just have to write something. And it's the same for the defense. Like, you don't really need... It doesn't need to be special. You just need to show up and say something, basically. I have seen one example of someone who failed part of their candidacy exam, and they're still in the program. Like, it was obvious that their advisor was out to get them, and they're still in the program. So it turns out it wasn't that important after all. Okay, so now you've passed your coursework, you're doing research, you've passed your candidacy exam, now you just have to write a dissertation and defend it. And again, you just have to write something. I've seen dissertations that are fewer than 50 pages and not anything special in terms of quality. I've also seen defenses that haven't been, have been pretty atrocious in my opinion, and these people, they still get their PhD. In reality, all of these programs have incentives to push you through it once you are in. Like, it looks good for their statistics, it looks good for them if you pass your dissertation, if you, if you get through the program and get your PhD, that's in everyone's best interest. And so the last thing they want to do is fail you. So in reality, I think doing a PhD is actually quite easy if you don't really care that much. If you, as an average PhD student, just want the PhD with a minimum effort, it's not actually that hard. A lot of the pressure that you experience during your PhD come from yourself or come from your expectations or the decisions you make through choosing an advisor who is ambitious, which is often chosen because you are ambitious. But yeah, that's my first Rage Bed video. That's it for uh, for now. But if you have other, other uh, requests or uh, suggestions for videos, please let me know in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one.